Hey you, welcome back. You know, I feel like it's been a while and I kept telling myself after the weeks kept going by that I was gonna sit down and make a video and then like three weeks go by and I'm like, ah oh, man, I still don't have anything. But we're back and you know what? A lot of things happened since the last video. A hurricane came rolling through, still dealing with that a little bit, had to move all the stuff outside in, then in, out, but you know, we're getting through it. So anyway, I sat down to make this video. Let me mess with some stuff. And then I was playing around in Resolve and I came across something really cool using the qualifier tool. So I thought I would share with all of you. And that's what we're talking about this week. So we're talking about the qualifier tool. And a lot of times the way that I've seen it used and the way that I've seen it presented is not ideal. Let's say that. Now, I'm not saying that I'm any better because when I was learning to color grade and when I started using the qualifier, I was doing all of the wrong things as well. To some extent, I think it's just the way that the tool is presented in DaVinci Resolve as well. You know, you have all those parameters and you look at it and you're like, I should use all of those. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to go through it and I'm going to share some tips that I use when I use the qualifier. And then I'm going to tell you guys situations that I use the qualifier for to hopefully show you that there's a more cinematic way. You know, I use all the parameters and I never knew why it was such a pain to move it around from shot to shot and it would never really look the way that I wanted it to. Just before we jump into this video though, you know, you should probably consider hitting the subscribe button because we're almost at a thousand and that's a pretty big milestone. I realize in like YouTube numbers, that's not like that big, but it's a huge milestone for me and it really helps me out a lot with the channel and also to push out videos to people. So hit that subscribe button hit the like button down below as well, leave a comment. I can't wait to see what the next thousand subscribers brings. And it's gonna be really cool seeing the channel grow steadily, uh, just like it has been this past you know, year and a little bit. So anyway, yeah, hit the subscribe. All right, so I have this image up and I feel like more likely than not, most people and myself included would have just jumped in and let's say I wanna change something in this shot. For example, let's say I wanna tone down this light over here. Let's make sure we have the contrast we want that looks to be about good. Then we add another node and grab the qualifier. Before I would swipe to get a good qualifier and make sure I grab the whole spectrum in this light. So something like that. It gives me my selection here and let's say I just widen it out just a little bit in order to get a good selection. All right, so I have this and if I move back to my log wheels and take the offset down, it's doing what I want but you reach this point and this starts to happen with qualifiers a lot where your key starts breaking, not to mention, it's pretty hard to move over to another shot. Even with really soft edges, you tend to pull in other parts of the image that you don't really want and your key starts to break. So that's really kind of a quick look of how most people are introduced to the qualifier tool. Now I'll show you a couple of really cool uses that I think allows you to use this tool a little bit more cinematically. Essentially, I'm just using that word to mean it has a better fall off and it blends in a lot better with the image. You'll tend to find that with cinematic grading, everything has a nice smooth roll off and everything really blends really well in your shot. You don't want the color grading necessarily to stand out. All right, so let's look at the qualifier tool and really restrict what we're doing with it to where we're only gonna use a single channel. This is something I do a lot and I always wanna use it in the broadest way possible that the tool will allow me. For this reason, I tend to go with luminance. Uh, not only have I found that luminance is usually the most precise, but I think it also has a beautiful fall off as well if you soften out the key. The best part is that it can easily be applied over to other images as well because you're using light levels. Occasionally, I'll also mix in saturation to get more accurate color keys, but let's try and stick to just one for now. On the same image, let's then press Shift H, which gives us our highlight mode. That way we can see what's being affected. I'll start pulling this up until I get only what I want here, and then also soften out the low. This is a much cleaner key. If I leave it at just this and go over to my log wheels again, and I start to pull it down, you'll see, even if I zoom in a little bit now, I'm not getting any weird artifacting like we were getting before when we were using all of the parameters. All right, so one thing, if you notice though, I'm getting a lot of the window as well if we press Shift H. You could approach this one of two ways. So for one, I'm not hating what it's doing to the window either. I've toned down that bright sky and it's making it a little less distracting as well. Second of all, if I really didn't want to put that in, I could go back to the qualifier and hit Shift H again then pull up the saturation parameter. It's still a clean key and I don't have to go far 
just a little and just soften out the bottom here and there we go. We've completely cut out the window at this point or almost completely. So pros to sticking with one channel keys, your key can be applied across multiple shots without breaking or causing weird artifacting um, or artifacts in your image, especially with good shot matching. You know, usually your different shots are gonna fall within the same luminance levels mo more than likely. Third of all, you also get very smooth roll off and softening. Even if I drop the low end saturation here and then turn this note on and off, it's only slightly affecting the window a minimal amount and it has a very nice roll off to it. Another way to use the qualifier, which I use quite often, is using it to minimize what another tool is doing. Let's look at this shot. So there's a lot of distracting red and I wanna bring that down a little bit. It's very saturated, very bright. I'll go into my versus curves and let's click on the red and start trying to minimize all of this kind of throughout the shelves and a little bit in the back. If I pull down the saturation, it's having the desired effect. This is definitely a lot more tame, but I also feel like I'm just sucking the life out of this guy here. His skin is looking pretty dead and desaturated. And if I do it before and after here, you can kind of see it, you know, his skin tones really went down. So what do we do about that? Well, that's when we use the qualifier. So once again, only using a single channel, I'm gonna try to put the saturation back in his skin and only go for the saturation that I want. Because our skin and the background that I'm trying to get rid of is not the same level of saturation. So we should be able to pull it out. So I'll start to pull up the low until we just start losing the skin. Then I'll soften out the bottom just so that it's not a harsh cutoff. We have a little bit of roll off. You might start to pull some skin tones back in, but if that happens, you can move around the qualifier again until we just lose that. It's a little bit of a dance. Sometimes you might have to compromise a little bit, but getting that smooth roll off is better than having like a harsh cutoff point. Now, if I do a before and after, it's very subtle what we did, but you can see the wall is toned down and we get a duller red in a lot of places, but our talon isn't affected by the versus curves. This is a good way to get a smoother key, especially when dealing with color. Uh, it's still allowing me to use the tool in a broad sense, and this won't break from shot to shot either. All right, so another really good use of the qualifier is to qualify other tools in Resolve. If we keep going with the same shot, here you can see in the background, there's still quite a bit of noise, which is okay, noise is fine, and I don't wanna remove it completely or soften out the image, but I do wanna do just a little bit of cleanup. So let's reset our node here and use it for noise reduction now. I'm not going to go over noise reduction here as that would be another video by itself. If that's something that you want, let me know and I'll make a video. There I can go into the difference between temporal and spatial as well. I try to mainly use spatial in most of my work, so let's go better for the mode and I'll use medium on the radius here. So then we can zoom in on the image here just to target that back portion and start bumping up the number slowly. Some amount of noise is still good, like I said, but I just want to clean up just a little bit back there. Especially in this image, it's actually the brighter areas because I think there's haze in the air which is making it a little bit more noisy, especially with the light hitting it. I'll typically take this up to around 15 or 20. I usually don't like to go past that, especially if the noise isn't too bad, or else you start getting like a really weird softening effect. That's generally where I feel like it's still acceptable. Now, this is good here, but it softened up the rest of the image a bit. If I zoom in and do it before and after, you can actually see a bit of it here. So let's say I don't want it affecting anything else except these areas specifically. Well. Just like the qualifier worked on other tools, it'll also work on noise reduction as well. In this case, I wanna use the cleanest key again, so I'll go with luminance. If I start pulling up the low end here, it's doing what I want and cleaning this up. Once I get it to where I want, there's still a very harsh cutoff though, and I just wanna solve that a little bit. So just increasing the low soft uh, should do it. So we have some sort of natural roll off and just not a very like harsh transition line. I'm actually okay if it's pulling in some of the face, I'd rather that smooth transition. It goes to what I was talking about before where there's that roll off. Sometimes you compromise a bit, but if it means your changes blend in better with your scene, then it's worth it. As long as nothing too funky starts happening or your image starts breaking, then it should be okay and your changes will look a lot more natural. Now, if I do a before and after of this node, you'll see the noise reduction is only affecting the parts of the image I've qualified. So there's also a smooth transition between noise reduction and no noise reduction. So that's where I'll leave it for this video. 
I think the qualifier tool is a really powerful tool, especially if used broadly and appropriately. It's not immediately obvious because in the UI, you're presented all the parameters at once. And I feel like when you look at a tool, most people, especially when you're just starting out, probably start playing with it and think, I should use all of these in order to get a good key. As with most things that I teach, I think it's always good to use tools in a broad sense first um, and to get the results you want because they'll blend into your scene a little bit better it'll be a little bit more cinematic and you'll get that nice smooth roll off between what you're doing and what the rest of the image is doing. That way your grade will incorporate well into your shots and they can also be transferred over to other shots that you're working on as well. So if you like that video and if you learned something, then leave a like down below. Like I said, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. More videos to come. I'm already working on next week's video, so I should have something up as well. And until next time, go out there and create something Lot of a